Hey, good morning, everyone. Pastor Brett here. Um, just uh, a real quick um, uh, portion of scripture that I wanted to share with you. Um, 1 Peter 3, and uh, we're going to be reading um, verses 15 through 21. Um, we'll read through the end, 22, just for the contextual picture. Um, First, uh, I'm sorry, First Peter 3, and uh, we're going to start at verse 15. I'm going to pray and say, Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for allowing me to share these things um, with these wonderful people. And I pray that you will bless them and encourage them to trust in you, trust in your word, and to study, oh, to show ourselves, Lord God, um, approved by you, uh, to show your approval of us. Um, I pray that you would teach us, that you would... Um, Comfort us and strengthen us. And we'll give you thanks and praise for everything that we learned today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, um, I thank the Lord because uh, I, 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 I see these things when I study with my wife. And um, um, this is exciting and interesting to me. I thought that I would share it with you. I believe that God shows me these things for this purpose um, and this purpose alone. Um, called me to preach, called me to teach, and called me to counsel according to his word, hallelujah, the word of God alone. So uh, we'll thank him and praise him for what we see here. Um, 1 Peter chapter 3, I'm starting verse 15. And uh, just to set this up a little bit, he's um, teaching about um, uh, of, uh, of um, obedience and suffering, uh, uh, suffering um, um, for right reasons and not wrong reasons. Um, um, he teaches about women, um, uh, and their behavior, uh, their um, appearance, um, and uh, the, the righteousness um, that that appearance portrays. Um, um, and it's not just about the outward appearance, of course, but uh, in verse 4, it's the hidden person um, of the heart. Um, uh, teaches the husbands how to respect and honor their wives. Um, and, uh, uh, finally he says in verse eight, be of one mind, um, have compassion towards one another to love each other, to be pitiful and courteous. Um, um, he comes down here to verse, uh, um, 14, he says, but suffer if you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are you, uh, and be not. Afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. All right. Get uh, your Bible. First Peter 3, verse 15. Um, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Keep an eye on that word answer. We'll come back to it. Um, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Or your good conduct conversation is actually better translated conduct. Um, for it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evildoing. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, uh, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. And of course, that's talking about in Ephesians, where um, Christ descended into the lower parts of the earth, um, uh, un, uh, which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing. That's uh, 120 years, right? Um, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. And this, of course, now is the um, um, the um, foreshadow of baptism. Um, Peter says, uh, the like figure, or foreshadow, uh, whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. I teach you that baptism is part of the um, salvation equation. 
period. It is. It's part of the salvation equation. If you can't, then it's not going to hinder you, the thief on the cross. But if you can, you better, because it's a command, you know. Uh, repent and be baptized, every one of you. Uh, so, I mean, you know, the scripture is clear that baptism is a necessary part of the salvation equation. But that baptism itself does not save you, all right? It doesn't uh, um, have some special cleansing power. Salvation is in the blood of Jesus Christ alone. It's in faith, by faith in the finished work of the cross, because Christ suffered and shed his blood on that cross. And so we need to know that the blood of Jesus Christ is what saves, period. Um, but uh, the command to be baptized is very clear in Scripture. Um, but that's not my point here. My point here is that word answer, and he says, verse 21, the like figure whereunto baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Thank you, honey. Um, so um, the answer of a good conscience toward God in verse 21 all right, so now you see the word answer twice in this text. All right, um, are they tied together? Absolutely, I'll tell you why. Um, first of all, they're not the same um, words. Um, the answer here in verse 15 um, is apologia. It's a, a rational, intelligent defense um, for the faith, literally. Um, you're, of course, the, this is where we get the um, English apologetics. Um, and apologetics is simply a defense of whatever, you know, your faith. Obviously, this is reference to our faith, Christian faith. But um, um, there are, is apologetics uh, in other arenas as well. It's because it's a defense. Uh, apologia is a defense. Now, in verse 21... Um, Peter doesn't use the word apologia here. Um, this answer is a wrong translation in the King James Version. They just, you know, sorry, all you KJVO fans, the King James Version got this wrong. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the Greek is aperitema. Aperitema is, a, it's an inquiry. Um, it's a question. It's an intense desire to know. All right, so uh, the um, uh, ASV or, uh, yeah, the American Standard, 1901 American Standard, um, I thought was a really good translation of the word. Um, they used interrogation, which is good um, because it's an intense desire to know. It's an inquiry. So it, it is a question. It is, we want to know this, and we want to know this deeply. We want to dig... Second Timothy two fifteen study spudazo. That's uh, that's a um, spudazo is a um, it's a uh, um, diligent study. It's a it's a diligent digging. In the same picture here, you're diligently inquiring to know. You're not giving an answer. An answer is a response to an inquiry. So why would they use the word answer there? Nah, I didn't get that. I don't understand that. Um, the ESV um, really gets this right. Um, and don't worry, I'm not an ESV lover. Um, I, I encourage you to do this for this reason alone. You don't see these things if you don't study them out. And if you don't have other translations um, to look at, to compare one with the other, I didn't even look at my, my BST, my NASB. Um, I didn't even look to see what they translated, um, but I will. Um, but the ESV, they body slammed this translation. This was great. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I thank the Lord for it. Um, 1 Peter 3, 21, the ESV says, 
Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but here it is, an appeal to God for a good conscience. So the appeal to God is absolutely perfect because that's who you're seeking to know to begin with in order that you may defend the truth in verse 15. Uh, that the writer says, Peter says in verse 15, we're, we're, we're trying to defend the faith, apologia, apologetics. I studied Christian apologetics in seminary, and and it, um, Josh McDowell was mandatory reading, all right? Um, and, uh, of course, that's when I was first introduced. It was in 1993. Wow. Oh, did I say that? 1993. <laughs> I was introduced to... Josh McDowell, evidence that demands a verdict. And uh, uh, oh, what a phenomenal um, teaching tool and learning experience that was, and still is to this day. Um, because uh, what better source for Christian apologetics, a defense of the faith, than the Word of God itself alone, really. Uh, I didn't need Josh McDowell's book. It was only a help, only a tool that God used to encourage me to do what I'm doing today. Um, and so looking into this in other translations is absolutely necessary. Otherwise, if I just trusted the King James Version, all right, I don't understand this. I, I don't. I don't get this. I'm not getting what I'm sharing with you now. Um, if I were just KJVO, I wouldn't be getting this. I wouldn't even be ex. I wouldn't even be looking for it because we were told, no, "Don't do that." Because if you do that, you'll be in sin, and you'll be. Uh, Deceived, you're opening yourself up for deception. How am I opening myself up for deception? By studying the word. And you can't, you can't um, adequately study the word of God by reading just one English translation. If I just read the ESV and didn't study it at all, didn't look into the original languages, I wouldn't learn anything. It doesn't matter what version you use. All right, if you don't study, you won't learn these things. So you should have multiple translations. The translators to the reader in the 1611 version, which I have sitting right there, I use it, okay? I love it, um, and uh, um, it's the most trustworthy English translation in the world that we have. But it's not the only English translation, and it is not the only trustworthy English translation. Other English translations are trustworthy in certain points. The, the modern critical text I don't trust um, as my sole source because, quite frankly, it's taken from corrupted documents, corrupted manuscripts. So um, you just have to study, study. Um, 1 Peter 3.21 in the LSB, this is John MacArthur's translation um, master seminary work here, and uh, they said corresponding to that, um, baptism now saves you not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal of a good conscience toward God. So the appeal is the same as the ESV would translate it, because that's what it is. It's an inquiry. It's an appeal. It's a it's a request, a question. It's not a answer. So, hey, I hope that was a blessing to you. Um, Jesus loves you. I love you. Um, study, all right, 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself approved unto God. Not that your studying wins God's approval, but that your study brings you to this place where you can show others that you are truly approved by God. Um, hey, Jesus loves you. I love you. I hope and pray that you have a great day. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name.